Okay, so the first pro tip I'm going to give you today is remove the masking tape as soon as you can on anything. The reason being, oops, the reason being is it doesn't take long for masking tape to really stick and then it becomes very difficult to remove. So pretty much as soon as the paint's dry and if you're done painting this area, remove the masking tape. I don't know how many times I've seen a paint job in somebody's house or even in businesses where there's pieces of masking tape left behind that the previous painter just never removed. And years go by that masking tape and the glue turn into like cement. You can never get it off. Okay, so the next tip I have for you is more of a time-saving tip. We already have the doors kind of, you know, tarped off, but we left them loose so that we could get in. This is the master bedroom right here, so we still need to be able to get in and out. And that's the laundry room behind me and then the, the rear exit, which we use most. We've already got the plastic up here, but you know, it's a little bit too big, right? So in order to paint this, you know, somebody might think, okay, I need to start over. Well, there's no need for reinventing the wheel here. So what I'm going to do is, these are already in place. Just take the uh, staple gun and staple these kind of just inside where the trim would go. All the way around. And you can see where that line is because there was some green paint on here at one point as well. Like that, take it all the way down and then take a utility knife or a pocket knife and just cut it. This table's kind of in the way. Before you do this, you want to make sure that you don't need to get into any of these rooms for a little while. So they're going to be pretty much tarped off until you're done painting. You can always temporarily remove it and put new staples in if you absolutely have to get in there. But this is where kind of planning ahead a little bit really comes into play. This would go a lot better if I had the utility knife handy, but I just don't have one here. I forgot to bring one because this knife isn't all that sharp. You know, I'm not trying to tape this off perfectly or anything like that. This is more or less just to keep the paint from splattering onto the door and over here where there's some nice oak finish trim around the door that I don't want to get paint on that to create more work for myself later. But you get the idea. I've got this nice and tarped off now. I might need to trim it up a little bit better. Might put a little bit of tape. Oh, here's a perfect example of what I was talking about. Some old masking tape from who knows how long ago that's all hardened and crusty. I'll have to scrape that off. Exactly what I'm talking about. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time getting this perfectly taped off. Just want it good enough. Just make sure my line is inside of where the trim around the door goes and you're good to go. Hey, look what I found in the garage. This will make this a lot easier. Okay, so I mentioned in one of the earlier videos in this series that one power pro tip for painting is to remove as many things from the wall as you can before painting. Don't try to tape around switch plate and outlet covers like this. Just pull them off because you'll never ever be, <laughs> no matter how hard you try, you're never going to be able to get that tape on there good enough to where you won't get paint bleed through and you'll leave paint on your nice wall plate cover. So I'm going to remove these. And I do have the circuit turned off, so I don't have to worry about getting shocked or anything. And another quick tip too, when you pull these off, grab a Ziploc bag to keep them in, that way you won't lose any of the screws. These won't get lost or beat up or scratched or get paint on them. And then just take some tape. And you really just need to cover the switch. That's just about it. And you can kind of see where the line was for the cover on this thing. That's really about it. Probably even trim this off just a little bit up here. I don't want to have any blue paint poking through when I put the switch cover back on. And if you're not sure, just grab the switch plate cover again and kind of set it in place. And if you, as long as you don't see any blue tape sticking out, you'll be fine. And that's completely covered there. So in addition to doing this as part of the prep work, you'll also want to go around and pull out any nails or staples that might be in the wall, fill them with a little bit of spackling putty, sand that smooth before you paint. You might want to hit it with a little bit of texture if you need to. I've got that texture in a spray can. I'll leave a link in the description for the product I'm using. It's not great, but you know, if you're doing an okay job with it, you can kind of help blend it in a little bit and you won't see that repair as easily. And then also, especially in these high traffic areas or if you have 
kids and pets in the house like I do, there might be some things stuck to the wall. I don't know what they are, bits of food or whatever. You might need to, you know, grab a putty knife, scrape those off, or you may need to even kind of sand them off a little bit before you paint because they'll show through. Now I've got some little things stuck to the wall here. I have no idea what they are. Maybe I don't even want to know. One more thing to mention too, while you're doing some of this last minute prep work and you're scraping anything that's stuck to the wall off, now's a good time too to look for any paint drips, either from when we painted the ceiling, if we got any white dripped onto the wall, now would be a good time to scrape that off, maybe even sand it down a little bit. Or from a previous paint job, go ahead and scrape that blob off. And I know there's a few paint blobs down that way a little bit. I'll need to scrape those and probably sand them a little bit. But hey, that's okay. It's these extra steps that will yield professional results and you'll get a much better paint job out of it. And I can compare that in this instance to the paint that was here before. Not only do we not really care for this baby blue color, they just did a really poor job applying it. There's quite a few drips. Probably won't be able to see this on the camera, but maybe you will. If you look close, you can see that they only put one coat of paint on because I can see white kind of shining through from behind this paint. And I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what the guy at the paint shop says. There's no such thing as one coat paint and primer in one. Now I do recommend using paint and primer in one, but always count on even the expensive stuff doing at least two coats so you can avoid having color shining through from behind. I'm going to get started. I need to do a little bit more prep work here and I will be doing a little bit more masking on this one. I am going to mask off the ceiling because I don't want to get the wall paint on the ceiling that I just painted. And I do have a special painting tool that makes applying masking tape to sections like this much, much easier. You can use it on the floor and the ceiling. I'll show that to you in a few minutes. You may have never seen one of these before, but it really makes taping and masking much, much quicker, especially when you're doing larger rooms like this. So stay tuned for that. I'll put a link in the description to that tool as well if you want to check one out for yourself. And let's get going. Okay, as promised, I wanted to show you a special masking and taping tool that makes masking and taping much, much easier and much more effective. And that's this right here. This is a 3M tape and paper dispenser in one. So basically what it does is as you pull the paper off, it applies tape along the edge of it too. So you can just tape things off really easily. It is a little bit fussy. Sometimes the tape kind of comes off and you have to start over. But even with that, it makes masking and taping so much easier. I highly recommend picking one of these up. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below the video if you want to check one out for yourself. But if you're going to be doing some painting, especially if you're painting a lot, doing your whole house or something like that, it's going to make your job so much easier and you'll be glad you picked this up. So I'm going to just do a small section. There's kind of two ways you can use it. You can pull off a piece and apply it by hand, or you can kind of pull it off and apply a long string kind of as you go. So just to demonstrate how this thing works, I'm just going to pull off a small section, attach it to the ceiling, then you'll see how it works. So I'll just tear off a small section and I'll just apply it to the ceiling. It's a little bit trickier on the ceiling to use, but works great for floors. It's fantastic. So, so you just apply it on there like that. You might need to keep a roll of tape with you to kind of tape it up in little sections so it doesn't just flop down like that. But this will make this job a heck of a lot easier and just much more effective. So one other tip I want to give you, I mentioned this earlier too, is that when you're doing a, a painting job, remove the masking tape as soon as you can. Don't leave it on there for days or weeks because it'll kind of harden and dry and can rip paint off. That's especially true if you're masking over freshly painted areas like the ceiling here. So as soon as I'm done painting the walls, this stuff's coming down so I don't have any issues. Now in this case, if I do, you know, have a little bit peel off or something like that, as long as it's not major, it will be okay. We are planning on probably putting some sort of crown molding or a trim kind of in this location here that will hide most of that anyway. But Still, you want to do as good a job as you can so you have less work to do later. Okay, so we're just about ready to get started painting the walls. I am going to be using this extra wide 18 inch roller pad as opposed to the standard nine inch roller pad that most of you are probably used to. My thought is it's twice as wide, get it done twice as fast. They are a little bit more expensive, but I think the savings in time is worth it. In case you're wondering, the color that we're going to be doing here is called Honey Nougat. So picked it up at Home Depot and not sure what it's going to look like just yet, but we'll give it a try here in a minute. And if you end up liking it, well, the color's called Honey Nougat. And one mistake 
I see people make sometimes, and you can kind of see it on this wall too, is try to just get it done in one coat. And especially if you're planning ahead on doing two coats, you don't necessarily have to worry about getting complete total coverage that first coat. If a spot's a little bit thin, don't worry about it. You'll get it on the second coat or third if you really need to, but good quality paint and primer in one like this should cover pretty well with two coats. So let's get started. So I don't necessarily need to go all the way up to the top, but I can because I have that paper there. You just want to kind of use overlapping strokes. You want to keep your roller pretty moist, but not so wet that you get drips. That is somewhat of a fine art, kind of striking that balance, of course but you'll get the hang of it, especially if you're taking on your first big painting project like this. Now for round switches and outlets and things like this, I wouldn't recommend rolling over them. I would kind of go around them, and then if you need to, you can cut in and fill in with a brush later. I'll show you what I mean here. So let's kind of go near it like that. A big roller like this, it's a little bit tricky to get that finesse, but do the best you can. And I'll just cut in with a brush around that later. So I'm not going to worry about that there's a few faint spots. Get it next on the next coat. And that's pretty much it. I'm going to stop the camera here in a minute because watching me paint this entire wall will be like literally like watching paint dry so i won't bore you with that stop the camera or maybe i'll just let it maybe i'll just let it run do it in fast motion or something Some music going though 